Okay, so with this being said, we are starting to working on smoke testing. Hopefully you guys heard about that, uh, smoke testing. So that term came from, um, from a computer world, the actual hardware, not software. And what it means is really that, um, so back in the days when you, I don't know if you guys had the chance to like assembly your computer on your own. So you get these different parts like CPU, motherboard, um, like GPU, memory, hard disk drive and all that. And then you put everything together. And usually what first thing that you do, uh, well, you need to install like Windows, whatever operating system, but before you actually get there, you usually just turn it on quickly and just trying to figure out if there's any smoke coming out of the box, right? Because if you somewhere, if you messed it up and uh, put like minus uh, on, on top of the plus, and I, I actually saw that with my own eyes, it can be, it can be smoky. So without like actual, actually like testing if it's working or not, you're just looking for smoke, some very quick, um, result that will actually say like, okay, does it work or doesn't work? So it's usually in our terms, it's like small set of test cases. So it's like test suite uh, to ensure that the most important functions work. So of course you would never see any smoke coming out of your web application out of your browser, right? Browsers don't burn and don't produce any smoke, but uh, the term is still there. Um, basically the reason behind is just to make sure that the build is stable. So your application is, uh, you can spend more time testing it. So for example, if a login is broken or create a, um, an account is broken, you cannot even test it. It's like dead, right? So it's, it's usually, that's why it's usually like P1 critical priority. If something like that is broken, there is no uh, point to, to spend any time on it. You need to re return it ASAP and create that defect and ask them developers to fix it immediately. Because you basically, you kind of will be get paid, but you cannot work really on anything, right? So. Um, another term for that is called happy path. And why? Because it's usually what um, kind of very positive way of using your application. So something that um, your application is supposed to do. For example, again, login. Most of the users will be logging in for what? To get logged in really, right? They're not logging in to break the application. They just want to use it as it's supposed to work. If they search for something, they want to get some results back, right? They're not looking for like no results. They, they looking for results. So that's why it's called happy path. And um, I would say a smoke um, as opposed to another example that I gave it to you. So that's why there is like a car and like some some fire going on. Um, it's like a test drive of a car. So as opposed to like 200 inspection, which would be regression, which we will cover later on in the future uh, classes, um, that's very detailed testing, right? It's like 200 and you have to go one by one. It's a lot of stuff. Here, it's more like a test drive. So as a customer, as a buyer, uh, if you go to, uh, any dealership, they will say you like, hey, take a test drive. And uh, you're not gonna like check all the brakes and like all the fluids and like everything, right? You would probably like, you will just drive it, really. You don't care about like tire pressure or any, anything like that. You just, you just take a, uh, drive it a little bit. You make left, you make, make right turn on the audio system, maybe like AC, not, not more like it's very high level, right? Very high level. You don't have to know how it works really. 